Hey guys, what is up? I am Zone, and I got another video on my series on Inside the Mind of a Unicum. This time, I'm playing the 5100, the Tier 8. I want to show you guys how this changes my gameplay and how it changes my decision making process when I'm in a Tier 8 and when I'm in an auto loader. Uh, you guys want me to talk a little bit about the tank? I'm going to talk about it right now. It's got 1753 DPM, it's a 6 shot auto loader, and it's got very low armor while being very fast. This changes things, and it changes how I'm going to play this tank. I'm going to use these characteristics of the tank going into battle. So now looking at the teams here, it is a steps battle on encounter. I am top tier, which is great. I see that there's an average amount of tier 8s on both teams. They have a lot of heavy tanks with a lot of hit points, which is great for me. I can get some damage out of it. They have a lot of lower tier fast tanks. The thing to know with the AMX 5100, it's armor is very thin and so it can be penetrated by all of the tanks on their team every one of these tanks can penetrate me I need to be very careful about how I use my hit points now I'm going into game I see that I'm probably gonna go toward the nine line the reason being that the nine line sort of controls this map it has the cap over there and this line is very hard to push when they have a lot of heavy tanks like this and so I'm gonna go toward the nine line and try to clean up some of the lower tier tanks and any of the higher tier tanks I see as well See this leopard's gonna go and spot. He will spot me, so I need to stay outside of the um, spotting range. And I'm hoping he doesn't spot me because he's a lower tier tank. But he's just going ham. Okay, he backed off. I don't want to get hit by Artie, so I pulled away. To use the my knowledge of the uh, maximum view range to stay out of his uh, spotting range. Now I'm looking at where my team is going, and I'm deciding that I'm not gonna come this way. I look. I see what's going on right now. I see that my whole team went this way and that they're playing along this ridge and I only have two tank, two tanks on my team going this way so I'm making the decision that I don't want to be here alone especially in an auto loader that has 45 seconds between clips I need to be with teammates when I'm reloading so I'm going to try and see if I can coerce my team to push this lane I'm not liking what I'm seeing right now from my team that they're all sitting at this corner they need to move up and push the 1-2 line if we have any chance of winning this game so they're chipping away this T34, that's great. Hoping I can push up here and get these guys to move up. I'm lit. I don't really know how. My T4 just got destroyed. Now I'm just gonna try and get some pressure into the tanks on this side. I wanna get I wanna get a kill shot on that T34. Now I get hit by Artie in the process, that would be great. Guys, I just want to point out that. This right here is why pushing the 1-2 line on steps from the north cap is very challenging. What you'll see right here is that this T-34, even though he's a one-shot, it's holding back our team from pushing this line because he's a clear line of sight through this whole lane, and he can see us if we wanted to push this lane. And the KV-85 and the T-25 AT have effectively locked down the H line as well. Because of this, if you try to push up, you'd be in an extreme crossfire, and this is why pushing this is very challenging um, from the north side. You could do it if you had a fast platoon of medium tanks and you wanted to push right to this corner right away with the help of your team, but it's not something I recommend to people playing solo. Pushing this is very challenging. I typically recommend players play the 9-0 line where you have two different avenues of attack. You can push the low road. You can push the high road where the uh, the dooms are. It allows for multiple avenues of attack and multiple avenues of defense and cover to retreat if you see that your team is not supporting you. R already puts in a good shot into their T25. I'll try to poke up here and get the kill shot on him. Dead. That's good news so far. If we kill this T34, then we can get good shots. With the enemy. And shoot the circle. So I'm going to try and move up now a little bit. And the already shooting at me. Both already just shot at me. I'm not being super aggressive right now. I don't have any armor. I'm just trying to get some shots to the tanks that aren't really looking at me. We need our tanks, uh, like this T-34, to move up and to kill their T-34. The moment he's dead, I'll push up and start putting pressure on these guys. Alright, he's dead. That's wonderful. Churchill puts in a good shot into him. I'm recognizing that we're losing the 9-0 line faster than we would like, so I'm getting more aggressive onto this T-34-85. I see they're both staring right at me. I need to get safe, especially from that KV-2. We can put in a big KG shell to me. And I'm looking to kill this Artie. I bounced off of, oh, there's a rock there. 
Oh, I'm gonna kill him right now. Down goes their Artie, which is great. Now, what I'm using right here is I'm using this ridge line to give me gun impressions so I can shoot them and limit my exposure time. Of course, the Artie uh, shoots me anyway, which nullifies that entirely. Don't shoot me, KV2. Much to live for. But I know this KV2 is definitely looking to probably put a shot into me. Do the big gun? Yeah, he's in the big gun. So I'm looking at these tanks, I realize that I'm not going to get another shot into them, I decide to press C to begin my reload. I'm pretty much just waiting on my team to move up now and maybe take this KV-2 shot. Now I'm moving this way, I'm not reloaded yet, but what I'm doing is I'm using this bush that allows me to spot these guys and they're not seeing me, so that KV-2 did not spot me. And I'm getting lights on these guys so I'm getting, I know where their position is, and eventually when I'm loaded I can get a clip off into their sides. Now, I don't like that we've completely lost the 9-0 line, but our advantage is that they have not started a cap yet. So we have time to kill these guys and then push through onto this side. Now, I got lit, presumably by this uh, Luva. But I need to be very careful. I believe the already just fired. So if we can kill this KV-2, I will clip this Luva. Okay, dead. Now I'm going to clip into this Luva. Fired. I'm getting shot up by other tanks. And I get my last shell off. Another bounce. Sadly. Probably should have been shooting gold. And I'm probably going to die right here. Nope. RNG to save me. This T3485 is really being frustrating for me. He's basically just sitting outside of render range. And he's outside of the spotting range, so I will not be able to spot him on my own. I probably should have had a uh, gold clip loaded for these tanks, but that's a mistake of mine. But now I'm pretty much just waiting. We have to wait. Now I'm reloading. I'm letting this T-34 weather the shots from the Lova. He's being slow and not realizing that I am reloading. I'm not lit, which is keeping me safe from that already. Now I realize I got two seconds left on my reload. I'm going to try and flank this Lova without getting shot by the T-34. Now uh, this T-34 doesn't want to die either. Neither do I. So I'm just pretty much baiting my time. I'm letting my team flank this Lova. I don't want to die. So I'm letting them get around him. I'm going to keep using my teammates here to help me win this fight. If he's going to push me, then I know I can take this hit. So, and down he goes. I don't want to die to the T-345. I remember him being outside out here somewhere. And the already just fired. He missed. That's great. So I don't want to go along this ridge. Because the T-34 is out here. So I need to push up and put some pressure. Oh, there he is right there. I need to push up put some pressure on the T-34 and get shots on the T-345. I want to take the shots on the T-345. He's not even looking at me. So this will be the kill shot. I can get another shot into this T-34, and then the game will pretty much be over. I bounced off of his side, so ram kill. Ramming speed. And now the artist is fired, he missed again. So that was a really good example of me using my clip, and then right at the very end you saw me pulling away from the low to try to bait him around so that my team had shots on him. And I was basically bluffing if I was loaded or not. Crusader, I don't believe is loaded. He's probably loaded at any second now. Yep, there he is. So our team should be able to kill him, and that will be the end of the game. Not an amazing damage game. You see we get about 2,600, 2,700 damage. But that's not bad for a tier 8, uh, considering I only have 1,400 hit points. And I got 4 kills out of it. And what normally I don't like going, that 1, 2, 3 line. But it worked out well because it's where my team went. And so I, as an auto loader, you need to recognize that you should not go alone. In a tank like a 5100 where you cannot escape from the fight if your team decides to get pushed. This uh, AMX M4 did a great job. You know, 4,000 damage. That's a quite quite good tank if you don't already have an AMX uh, M4 Liberté. Let's go into another game and see how the 5100 does. Right away, this is a good example of me not being a top tier tank. These are tier 9 tanks. 
I'm noticing that they have some tanks that's going to be trouble for me to penetrate, including the E75, the M103, and so and the KV4 even. So I'm going to load a uh, gold clip because my reload is very, very, very slow. 45 seconds, so if I have to run into something where I might not be able to penetrate it, uh, there's no chance of me being able to switch my round. So right off the bat, I'm going to load a gold clip. It's encounter. This is a very small map, so being aggressive early is very helpful with, with as long as your team is with you. Looking at our tank comp, I'm probably going to go the 8-9 uh, line. Now that's re the reason is because I see that they have a lot of heavy tanks. They have T, uh, IS, T29, KV-4, M103, E75, and I'm hoping that they don't go the, the A9 line. This map is a little bit uh, unexpected. It can play a lot of different ways. But I'm going to make the play to go to this building right away. I'm hoping a shot on tanks like this T9, but I won't be loaded in time. Okay, so I see that they have a lot of tanks here, but it's good for us because they have an E75 who's sitting all the way back at A9. And uh, Wheezy120 as well. That's not very good for their team. They have so many tanks that are high tier that need to be influencing battle that can't do it from this spot out here. So I see that. I see this T29 moving up YOLO style. So I'm going to get some clips into him and then I'm probably going to pull back and go into the town. There it is. All I'm, all I'm doing right now, I'm just trying the drive wheel and he's dead. So, unless let me get spotted in a couple seconds, I'm going to clip. He's saying five is being very aggressive. I don't want to be the one to take the shots of him, so I'm going to pull back. I'm going to clip. The reason is, I don't even want the weathers these shots in the C-75. Our team is pushing up, so I might turn around. Yeah, I'm going to turn around now. My team has decided, and there's a lot of tanks in town, and there's not enough tanks here, so I'm going to stay in this 8-9 line. And I'm going to help this uh, Wheezy-120 kill this C-75 the moment I'm loaded. C-75 is not really recognizing that he's being shot at from both sides, so he's turning his side armor to me, which is wonderful if I was loaded. Now, this is a common problem with auto loaders. Sometimes you decide to reload, and it's not the best timing. This Wheezy-120 is going uh, extremely ham. He doesn't really need to. I'm loaded in five seconds, so I'm going to start poking out now and start looking for a shot or something. Not the best tank to shoot at, but I'm going to take shots when I can get them. Okay, there we go. I got a track on him. This is really important. I need to keep him tracked here so I can clip, clip him and kill him before he can get away. Okay, I, I tried that. That shot most likely wasn't going to hit, but I took it anyway because he really needs to die. So I'm now got my full clip off almost into the Z-75 and tanks, which is great. We need to push this in a couple seconds, and we need to kill the D-75. Tanks, especially like a Yag Tiger with hit points, need to start moving up this line. We're getting flanked right now, which means we need to push into one flank, and the best flank to do that is this one. I recognize that this LTDB is flanking me. I need to get away. I still have uh, 15 seconds on my reload. There's an M103 behind us as well. I just run into the building. Now, I haven't gotten away far enough, I decided I'm going to turn back around and go clip and kill this M103. Because he's gotten far too aggressive and separated from his team. So now I'm pushing back into this flank, the TV-41 I believe is down rounds, he just shot into one of our teammates. He's the next highest priority tank to kill. I mean, looking at me, which is wonderful. Or shall I also do it? And dead. I'm trying to get my last two shots into this KV-4, and then I'm going to clip. Lower plate's still exposed, so I'm going to take these shots. And now I'm out of rounds. All I did right there was I recognized that this flank was closer, and this M103 was too exposed, and left his teammates behind. So I decided to capitalize on that, kill him, and put my shots into these two tanks. Now I see that at 34-100 is a bit alone. I'll probably go and clip these two tanks. Or this one, depending on the situation, what happens when my I am loaded in 25 seconds. It appears that our team is going to push this KV-4, which is fine. It's a good play to make. But if they're going to do it, they need to do it soon. They can get shot from the tracks, these uh, across the tracks from these two tanks out here. I'm going to push with them. 
Indian Panzer and the Steel Therapy are, are probably going to die. Okay, never mind. Okay, so the KV-4 died. Now I'm going to go back over to these guys and help them out. I should have shots on this Indian Panzer momentarily. If I don't, I can break down this building to shoot him. He's pinched into the corner and I'm going to provide crossfire from the trails, the train tracks on him. We decide to pull into the uh, main center here. I'm going to move position to get shots on him. I see that we're being capped, but it takes a very long time to cap in encounter mode. What I'm doing now is just putting shells into these tanks. They don't even recognize that I'm here. As long as I clean these two tanks up, this will be the end of the game. Okay, so the Yag Tire did a great job killing the tank that was on cap. Once we kill these two tanks, we'll wrap this game up. And that'll be a win for our team. And track shot. Dead. So almost 5k damage from my tank. That just goes to show that even if you're a below the tier, if you're not the top tier tank in the game, you still have an amazing uh, potential, especially in auto-loading tanks, that you can do a lot of damage and you can influence the win for your tank, for your team. Wow, I just got 20,000 battle. Just did a heavy tank mission as well. Looking at our team, if you look right here, our tier 9s, they didn't do a whole lot. Sometimes if your tier 9s or your top tier isn't doing it, Sometimes you need to make up, cut up the slack. We had a Skoda, only do 1600, which is not very much at all. We had a Wheezy 120 who just kind of did YOLO'd. I mean, he provided the opportunity so that I could clip into tanks, but he did not make the correct play for his tank. Our Yai Tiger did a great job at the end, so kudos to him. And the Eden Dean Panther, 2100 damage. That's a great job for him. 1044 basic speed. That about wraps it up, guys. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.